Welcome to Minutes by Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kinney. And we're here to talk about what goes on in the village, the township, you know, those uh, government entities that make laws, regulations, and ordinances that affect you out there. And whether you live in the village of Oxford, the village of Leonard, Oxford Township, or Addison Township, these are the people that, oh, you elected, and the committees and the commissions that make decisions that directly affect you, whether you attended that important meeting or not. And that's why we're here. Well, pretty much. And also we're here to dig for humor, right? Dig, dig, dig. Need a big <laughs> shovel because there's lots of humor. And you know what? If you folks don't show up to the meeting, you and know, those things. <laughs> the humor is really going to catch up to them later, wouldn't you say? Yes. Yeah. The other thing that we're, uh, we do here, and quite well, at least one of us, is uh, spread rumors. So uh, keep an eye on this program, and particularly this guy. Okay. Well, just because your rumors are written doesn't make them any better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that's, uh, you know, it depends on your opinion. But anyway, let's go on with our opinion. We're going to go with the Village of Oxford DDA, first of all. And then the other one we're going to talk about in terms of meeting is the Oxford Township Planning Commission meeting. Um, I'm going to take the newest one first, which would be the Village of Oxford DDA, and that was May 16th. Uh, Pete Schultz is the uh, chairperson. And fire chief. And fire chief. Does a great job for yep. both. Except he wasn't there on this particular meeting. Suba Sardet, who oh. is the pro tem, took over. What's the difference in a pro tem and a vice chair? I think it's pretty much the same. It's I all see. in the terminology. I see. It's all in the way it's accented. It's all in the way it's spoken. It's, it's all the way it is. <laughs> It's a deeper and deeper hole. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so anyway, so Supa started took over command, and um, uh, Bill Dunn was there, Rod Charles, uh, Jerry Cremens, and uh, let me see, Eugene uh, Malaya was there. Uh, normally there's Malia. nine members. Malia. Malia? Yeah. Okay, thank you for the correction. I'm fairly new in this area. Only been here for about a day or two. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, but... You know, the guy is very interesting. He was very outspoken in some of the issues that they talked mm -hmm. about. So, very well, knowledgeable. He, he used to be the, uh, uh, he used to have Mike McDonald's job over in uh, Leonard. Really? Yeah. Was he in business at one time? You know? Because uh, he sounds a lot like a business person. I right, he works with. with the Oxford Bank. Oh, well, that's close enough. That's a right. good business person. Yep. Uh, you deal with other business people by being with the bank. So, is he with the bank now, or is he retired? I think so. I think so. I think he is. Okay. Anyway, we'll spread that rumor. Uh, he is working for the bank. <laughs> That's a rumor, right? I play. I play golf with his father, Gino Malia. You do. The other Gino Malia. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we won't talk about that. I know that uh, you know. I hear you bring a shovel along to your your golf games, cover up all the little divot holes, big holes. All I those. call it aerating the lawn. Anyway, that's another <laughs> subject we should get into one of these days. Should talk about David's golf game, but let's not do that please, now. Please, please, that would be excruciating. <laughs> right, it would be. So anyway, first thing they did is a pledge. Good thing they Good always thing. do that. And uh, uh, Joe Frost, uh, who is the executive director of the DDA, gave his report. And he said that good news is there were two awards giving out, given out by the uh, Oakland County uh, Main Street. And oh. one went to uh, Jerry and Jamie Kremen. Oh, for Sullivan's Irish Pub. Irish Pub. And it's for Outstanding Business Award. Oh, ah. nice, huh? Yeah. They applaud. Great job. Have you ever eaten there? Yes. Terrific food. Good you shepherd's pie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you folks that haven't gone there, great Irish food served mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. I thought. Okay. And uh, little liquid refreshments over there as well. Wouldn't you know? Right. Wouldn't you know? <laughs> okay. A drop of the pure. <laughs> yeah, it would be. Yeah. And uh, the other award, interesting enough, went to the DDA. Really? Oxford Village DDA. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and it was for their performance um, and preservation, you know, for the uh, Main Street. Oh. You want to say preservation, <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> and they've had to work at it hard. They've got a great uh, team of people on that board now. And they're doing, I, th I think, some and pretty good things. financially, I think they're, well, I wouldn't say they're keeping that, their heads above water. Yeah. I, I don't think they've received all the benefits from the oil wells yet, but I think... The oil wells? Well, that's a rumor that we want to spread, that I they have see. oil wells. Uh, they hide their money in the backyard, uh, kind of like you do. Um, and But anyway, that is what it is. Uh, and Joel Frost said that also, in the past month, uh, there were 58 hours 
work by voluntary people that he has, mm. uh, you know, assisting in the DDA matters. Uh, he said that Facebook, interesting enough, has 726 uh, followers. Uh, that's a big jump between, I think it was 500 and some last month. Is that individual followers or yeah. hits? Individual followers. Wow. Yeah, so that's quite an improvement. Also, get this, the web page, year to date, 37,000 hits. Wow. Yeah, he's, I, I mean, he's doing something. I don't know, is he giving away money, coupons? Or something? That'll work every time. <laughs> it will, yeah. <laughs> uh, and he's indicated, too, that, um, let me see, the... Uh, Likes, you know, when you get a hit on it, you ask oh, yeah. for likes, it was over a thousand. Matter of fact, uh, 1,350 uh, likes. Oh. Now, we didn't talk about the dislikes. I don't think there were any. I didn't uh, think and of it. Although I think Facebook sort of gives you that ability now. I'm, I don't know what they call it. Dislikes? Well, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> think, they, I don't think they call it dislike. It's something they call else. It. Something else. I hate you. It was something they came up with about six months here? ago or something. I don't right. know. But that's a lot well, of likes. It is. I so, like that. So that's a good <laughs> tribute to uh, Joe Frost, who promotes and very uh, internet savvy. So, um, Treasurer's Report. Unless Joe's sitting there going, like, 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 like. <laughs> like, like, like. <laughs> you think Joe's doing that? No. I don't think he has time. <laughs> but let's talk about Treasure. Treasurer's Report, $12,142.75. Is that a bill or is that in the bank? <laughs> no, that would be the Treasurer's Report bills. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And actually, the bills are usually higher, but I don't think oh. the payroll is in on this one. Oh, okay. So they looked out in kind of in between. <laughs> you know how that works. Um, there was an individual from the Oakland County Main Street. His name is Bob. I didn't catch his last name. Maybe you know his name. Let's call him Smith. Uh, he was talking about a um, program called Project Driven, which is Main Street, Oakland County. Okay. And he said that the vision statements or the vision that you would have for Main Street is, has changed. He said, we used to have uh, committees, a committee for this, a committee for that. You know how that works. Mm. I mean, all those that want to volunteer, raise your hand to be on the committee. That we'll was a never problem. See them again. Showed up. And we'll never see them again. <laughs> never saw them again. <laughs> if they did serve one time, they usually didn't come back the second time or maybe the third time. So anyway, so uh, this uh, Bob said, well, things have changed now. And he said that uh, um, you need to not have these ongoing committees. Uh, What's the, what, what are but they have supposed task to force. What are they supposed to accomplish? Well, what you need to do is, he said, you need to talk to the businesses downtown, find out what their needs are. Okay. But also know the direction in which a DDA wants to go. In other words, if you have a um, promotion that you want to run, mm -hmm. uh, then you want to be interested in. Um, the way it's presented, you know, to the public. I, you call it marketing? That would be appropriate. You think you call it marketing, right? You could call it that. Okay. Well, that <laughs> he did. Yeah, that's what he called it. Marketing and advertising. Yeah. And actually, he <laughs> said that the marketing is more critical than it is the actual event Oh. in the way it's handled. I always thought marketing was determining who your target audience was and advertising was how to get them. Well, yeah. <laughs> actually, that's true. That's the way it used to work. But in this case, he's saying it has turned around. Uh -huh. You determine the marketing approach that you want, which supports, you know, the village. In other words, mm -hmm. what is the benefit to the village? How do you achieve that uh, ability to uh, improve the amount of uh, uh, number of people that come into the village, you know, to uh, purchase you know, from this area, or you know, to enjoy the entertainment that is provided and the amount the of village. money and the amount of money that they leave before they leave <laughs> and the amount of money which it comes down to right. ka ching ka ching and we'll talk about ka ching ka ching right after this folks when we come back <laughs> Welcome back to Minutes by Minutes. I'm Elgin Nick. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we are talking about the village of Oxford DDA. And uh, we reached a point where there's an individual who spoke before the group uh, who said, you know, from Oakland County, who is said, Dun keep it Bill, simple. Is Bill Dunn still part of that group? Bill Dunn is part of that okay. group. Okay. And you know what? Bill does add some pretty good input. Absolutely. This. 
since he's a supervisor of Oxford Township. Supervisor <laughs> of uh, Oxford Township. He wouldn't have to do this, but he has an internal interest, of course, to the village. All right. Hand it to you. Good job. Uh, anyway, uh, marketing is critical, they pointed out. We did discuss that uh, in the previous uh, session that we had here. Uh, he said, invite everybody downtown into a um, session that you would have with the DDA and discuss, you know, things of interest that they would have, you know, as a business. Now, the other thing is that uh, at one point, uh, Jerry Kremen says, you know, he said, there's one thing, the reason why you might not get businesses inclined to get involved in this, they might want to backstep, is because there are so many people, so many organizations that come to them with their hand out. You know, be it school. No. Oh, yeah. Everything. No. He said, <laughs> he said count thy ways. <laughs> Lots of ways. Uh, school, other benefits, uh, programs that are going on, um, charities. Uh, he said they, they all uh, come to the business people with their hand out and uh, trying to extract funds, you know, for their cause. Um, and people are under the consensus that if you're in business, I mean, you have all this money that you can dispose of, mm -hmm. and uh, being you're part of the community, you need to give it to them. Well, uh, the point is here that, uh, you know, these folks have to remain in business. And in order to do that, they need to make a profit. Send their kids to college. Send their kids to college or just plain survive. You know, since 2000. Pay the village taxes. Yeah. Pay the DDA taxes. <laughs> <laughs> taxes, taxes, all over. But um, yeah. and it's the American way. You well, make a profit if you're in business, and, and if you don't, right. you right. aren't. <laughs> right. So if a business, if you come in and try to solicit a business, solicit a business for funds, and they turn you down, don't get excited about it. Usually, they have a certain amount of money allocated, you know, for the year that they can spend a percentage. Uh, which is based on their profits that they make. So you may not be, you know, a recipient. There might not but, be enough funds to go but around. But if you can present them with a win-win situation, mm -hmm. they might be more receptive. Doubt it. <laughs> they might. What? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, this gentleman said, this Bob guy, he says, <laughs> um, do you meet the four-point goals that are required by... Main Street. I said, mm. so, okay, what are those? And we'll make up a for them if we mm -hmm. want to. But anyway, he said, all design goals. In other words, how, how you want to design your downtown. No. Organizational goals. How do you want to organize this group, you know, and the programs that you're going to be running? Mm. Promotional goals. How do you promote these goals? You know, how do you promote them once you figure out what you're going to do? Are they not all doing that right now? Well, in segments they are. Little, it, what do you want to call itty bits. A little bits? itty bit there, a little itty bit there. Here a bit, there a bit. <laughs> yeah, that's how they do it, right? Sounds like you're talking committees here. I don't know. Well, no, <laughs> it's not. They're, they're called task force. Oh, task force. they're task forces yeah. now. <laughs> we're going to change the name here. And, and that should make a whole lot of difference. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's what we're working on. So promotional goals and economic development goals. Now, there's a good one. I like that one. Mm -hmm. Economic development goals. How do you become economically developed <laughs> developed okay if yes if you can answer yes to all these things once you've analyzed it then you don't need a committee says <laughs> but if you if you can't then you need a task force you know to go ahead and, and figure it out and design it task force sounds like a lot of people at once yeah, but at once. But a you committee don't is much smaller. Yeah, but a committee has to meet every two weeks or every month or... Not at all. Or not at all. <laughs> There's a task force. You know, you're talking maybe every six months, maybe eight months, maybe oh, a year. Oh, okay. You know, so the investment in terms of individual time isn't as powerful. Sort of like a system, needs. more more like a system reset. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, then after that, they said, well, let's talk about the Lone Ranger Festival, which is coming up. August 6th, by the way, folks, uh, that they need sponsors and volunteers. Now, it doesn't cost anything to volunteer other than your time. If you have the time that you can spare, they're looking for you. What would a volunteer do? A volunteer, they can direct traffic. They can direct people. Yeah, I'm talking about traffic, tell not you where police to go? officers. <laughs> yeah, they could tell you where to go. <laughs> <laughs> or they could help organize things in terms sure. of in the parade elements that are, you know. If you've ever been in that parade, Mm -hmm. There's a, a lot of organization that goes into it as we yep. marshal back there in that mall. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, let me see. Joel Frost, let me see. 
suggestion came up that Joe Frost talk to individual businesses mm. uh, about um, maybe for the Lone Ranger uh, festival mm. that maybe they dress like Indians, cowboys, horses, porcupines, bears, whatever. Conestoga wagons. <laughs> yeah, dressed as those kind of things, you know, uh, would be a possibility. And uh, there was quite a conversation that went on. Well, maybe Joe doesn't have the time to do this for every individual, but Joe says, well, you Or know, other colorful characters from the yeah, past. Right. Wild Bill Hickok, Wyatt Earp. Yeah, you just don't, if you're Wild Bill Hickok, you just don't, you know, play poker with your, your back to the door. Oh, no. <laughs> it could be a problem. Anyway. And throw out all those aces spades. <laughs> yeah, right. That could be a problem, too. And sleep, yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, Jerry Crumman said, um, um, business donations, you need to be considerate um, of businesses when you go door to door sure. and, and try to be sensitive, you know, to the situation that they may not be able to you know give you what you're looking for at the time maybe not this year maybe next year might be better for him bill dunn says after the event he believes that they should follow up with the businesses and see what fruits were able to you know mature you know from from the parade and from the activities that were were developed and it's always good i think for a person seeking a charitable donation to have a good identification as to what organization mm -hmm. they represent yeah, that's that, absolutely that in, true. That, that in, increases the amount of confidence the business owner has. <laughs> that could probably do it. <laughs> the other thing that uh, Bill Dunn su supported was to, um, you know, make sure that the media got involved in this. Absolutely. Uh, the television media, the we're radio. Media. We're, we're media. We're media. We and are. We actually, are. we've done well in the past in supporting uh, all these causes and so forth. Even for the uh, uh, festival they're going to have at Seymour Lake. Oh, absolutely. So we cover, we cover that pretty well. Yep. Good fireworks. Right. Well, let's talk about the next uh, meeting, shall we? That was, that was pretty interesting yeah. stuff, huh? Uh, Oxford Town, you don't think so? I do, I oh, do. Oh, okay, well, I didn't see, you know, rousing, I do. I just, I do, I do. We're not getting married, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope not. <laughs> it would be a surprise to my wife, I can tell you that. And yours, too. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oxford Township Planning Commission meeting on May 12th, and Todd Bell, who I think is runs one of the slickest on-track meetings of any of the chair people, you know, in the township. That's right. Does a great job. He, he, is doesn't, a, he doesn't let it get out of control. Yep. Right, and he is a he is a contractor, so he's got the experience of All being right. out there, you know, actually uh, going through the the muck and doing whatever is necessary, you know, to make the project work. Um, Ed Hunwick is on that board, Jack Curtis, uh, Callie Rossner Meyer, who's very shy and timid and very seldom puts her ideas forth, and Mike Spiz. I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Spiz, who also serves on Oakland County as a commissioner. That's right. Yep, and he sits on this board because he wants to know what's going on locally. Good guy, Mike. And they uh, usually have a, uh, an advisor at those meetings, don't they? Uh, is it a lawyer or the uh, oh. planner? No, they have uh, planners and, uh, you know, uh, also uh, engineers okay. at this. And we'll talk about that when we come back right after this. <laughs> Welcome back to Minutes by Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we are talking about the Oxford Township Planning Commission meeting held on May 12th. Of course, they had the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. They had the roll call, all the good thing. And uh, public comments. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> no public comments. Yeah, but there were a lot of people there. Yeah, those shoes were pretty shiny. Yeah. Everyone was checking them out. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they were at, of course, the new facility at Township Hall on uh, Pontiac Street. Pontiac Street? No. No, Dunlap. Dunlap. 
Was I close? Close enough. We'll move them. No, it wasn't very close at all. <laughs> we're going to move them to Pontiac Street. No, we aren't. That's a big building to move. That would be your job. Take a note. <sighs> Anyhow, <laughs> uh, Jack Curtis said the uh, first thing he wanted to make a comment on is that the Hills of Oxford, the PUD, Public Unit Development, okay. almost forgot, didn't you? Okay, uh, was approved by the trustees board. So the final approval was is in. So that's a project that's going to go forward. Pretty good project over there, Hills of Oxford. The second thing that came up was unfinished business. And um, what, let me see, RM uh, multiple residence uh, zoned for final uh, amendment. They had an amendment to the, um, um, what do you call it? Yeah, one of those. How do you define multiple residents? Is that like condos or yeah. multiple houses? Yeah. yeah, this is condos. Okay. And it was uh, for, let me see, Sand Hill Townhomes is what it's called, and Abbey Ridge Apartments. So that, that where, defines where, where it. Where are they going to be? They're going to be, where are they going to be? They're going to be there. Yeah, they're going to be there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you see, somewhere I have it. No, I don't. I know I don't there's a lot it. of earth movers <laughs> over by Myers right now. Uh, that's maybe not that's the, different. No, that's not. Yeah, that would be different. That wouldn't be it. Um, anyway, they said, is there somebody that wants to come forward to talk about this project? I wish it was you. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> did, did anyone come forward? Yeah. Therefore? Chuck DiMaggio came Chuck forward. Chuck DiMaggio. Yep. And um, Burton Katzman. Okay. Uh, representing BKG Oxford Developers came forward. Well, that's a mouthful, isn't it? And what did they say? And they said nothing. <laughs> no, they, well, they did. Why? Uh, Is there for the photo ops? <laughs> right. right. <laughs> no, they were there to see if they could get um, uh, an approval on this and go forward. Um, and they brought in engineering consultant Jim Sharp to okay. review the engineering portion of it. And he said this was reviewed about a year ago. He said, so this is a very simplified thing. It's on record. Uh, it's just a matter that they had to make conditional changes in order to be approved. How many units were there? Um, you know, I couldn't even tell you that. But it uh, seems like it was 20 some odd units. Okay. But they, won't, they had conditions, so that's why it wasn't approved last time. All those conditions, they get uh, you every time. All conditions, <laughs> yeah, right. So anyway, so all the uh, conditions were met according to the site plan requirements. And so Jack Curtis made a motion to go ahead and run it through. It was done. That was real quick. Okay. All right, let's go on to a more complicated one where I Ooh. know something about it. <laughs> Shall we do that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that one went so fast I didn't really, you know. Um, anyway, it was just, just a yes, yes, yes. But he done. studied the next one. <laughs> I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any new business? Okay, there's a piece of property, roughly, I, I forget how many acres, uh, but maybe I'll remember down the line, uh, Shepherd Lane. I think it's over 90 acres. Where's Shepherd Lane? I have no idea. No. Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, there's one off. She yeah, <laughs> take a note. <laughs> take a note, Shepherd Lane. Uh, and what it is, is actually they're talking about changing the name of this street to some other street. And um, the fire chief <laughs> stood up and he said, no. He said, we can't find you <laughs> if you change it. He said, you need to go back to Shepherd Lane, you know, for this address. Because so, we're not changing the name <laughs> ourselves. No. So. Uh, and it'll be years before yeah. GPS is updated. Yeah, actually, yeah. Actually, Todd Bell says, well, we need a motion here to do that, or can you just go ahead and forward and, you know, make, make the change? But he says, we'll just make the change. <laughs> so there you are. So the street is going to be Shepherd Lane. Don't have a fire. <laughs> <laughs> right. Don't have, yeah. There, after it's Shepherd Lane, Pete will know where it's at. Um, so this is a final amendment to the Sand Hill Townhomes. Whoops. Nope. Yeah. No, that's not it. Excuse me. We got to backtrack. Okay. We just did that one. Shepherd Lane. Uh, this is a preliminary site plan. Uh, it's an I-1 zoning, which is light industrial zone at this point, but it's uh, they're doing an addition under the property, uh, a building addition. Uh, the builder is Ted Taylor uh, from WJ uh, Stewart Contracting. Uh, he lives in Waterford. Okay. And Charles Hubbard is the owner. And the addition is to the existing building is what they want to do. Where is it? Um, the building is located at, 
Oh, you would ask that question again. On Shepherd Lane. <laughs> oh, did I miss that one? <laughs> I said Shepherd Lane. That's where it's at. Okay. <laughs> Do you get it now? All right. Uh, I'm not going to go ask any more questions. No. <laughs> so, anyway, so like the a cons rabbit that went around the circle. <laughs> And will it ever return? Probably never. <laughs> but anyway, the consultant, Brian, uh, Carlisle, Brian from Carlisle Wardman, <laughs> he said that the biggest issue they have is the side setback. He said it does, it's non-conforming. Mm. You remember that word, right? Non-conforming. Non-conforming according to the zone or the... Um, or non-compliant. Ordinance, yeah. Oh, what's that? Or the code. Uh, so that, therefore, in order to do this, they will more undoubtedly have to go to the ZBA. You know, for approval, okay. for the setback. Okay. So that being said, they went on. Uh, he said everything else is good. Parking is good. Uh, everything else is great. Jim Sharp said, as the engineer, that uh, soil bores and um, would have to be taken. Okay. There's going to be city water and city sewage in that area, so they don't have to, you know, do a perk test as such. Um, and of course, uh, fire chief said that there will be no signs. Or there will have to be signs. There's no signs right now at the end of the road, you know, um, okay. you know, for no parking. Otherwise, people will park there, and if there's an emergency, he can't get to it. Okay. So, and you want him to get to it if you have a fire, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Okay. Uh, site plan uh, requirements. Um, let me see. Yeah, Safety. Your insurance company might have something to say yeah, about that. Yeah, might. <laughs> well, every site plan requires now to have the safety path included, and right. this site plan didn't have it. As Todd Bell pointed out, it's got to be included. Doesn't mean you got to do it um, down the line here, but he said it has to be included in the site plan. So they said, no problem, they will do that. So the preliminary was approved. Bang, done. bang, done. The next one they had, and this is a lot of business they had, uh, discussion followed by Kelly uh, Rosner Meyer on uh, legal procedures, on protocol for the ZB, between the ZBA and uh, Planning Commission. Oh. And her contention was that a, a recommendation should be made by the Planning Commission so that the Zoning Board has an idea of what direction this should be taken. Todd Bell disagreed with that, and he said no, that uh, he wanted them to be bushwhack, kind of like I do to you. No, I'm just, he didn't use the word bushwhack. But there but, should be some explanation, at least, of the problem involved. Mm -hmm. That's what I think too, but Todd disagreed with that, and he said, "Well, not, not that not that they were giving a suggestion mm -hmm. as to how sh how it should be solved. That's the ZBA's responsibility. Absolutely, but define the problem. Yeah, actually, it's up to the state code requirements too. You know, because yeah. you're going to govern some degree uh, by the um, codes established by the state. So anyway, so Todd Bell and Kelly agreed to disagree, <laughs> and uh, I can see Kelly's point on this that mm -hmm. they want some type of guidance, but. Apparently, they're not going to get it that way. Um, and another preliminary site that they dealt with was the uh, North Woodland site. It's a condominium uh, that is going in. And it's, um, let me see, it's on bar and drainer roads. Jim, Sh Jim Sharp said everything looked good as far as he was concerned. Uh, that particular site um, is on 90 some odd acre acres, I believe it is. Each site will consist of about 200. Uh, two and a half acres of uh, property. Would that be West Drainer or East? East Condo. I think it would be West Drainer on okay. this one. All right. um, and the discussion came about on uh, the driveway requirements. Mm -hmm. And because there is a private drive in there and it's gravel, the thought was to go pave it, pave it, but it has to go before the ZBA in order for that determination to be made. There were some other issues there, but, uh, you know, Pretty much they went through the whole thing, made recommendation. There are some things that will go before the ZBA. So, what's coming up? Not much. <laughs> Not much? <laughs> I got one meeting. I, on, three, on 525, I got the Oxford uh, area Board of Education, and they're going to meet at Oxford High School at 630, and that's it. That's it? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we'll catch you right here next time on Minutes by Minute. See you then. How much time do we go over? <laughs>